Welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. Photo Walkthrough is sponsored by Mosey.com. If you're looking for off-site backup and if you're a photographer, you really, really must. You can get a 15% discount by using the promo code PHOTO on Mosey Home or PHOTO15 for Mosey Pro. It's a great set-it-and-forget-it backup solution that moves your files off-site so if the worst happened, you could always recover everything. Okay, let's jump in and take a look at one of the brand new features of Lightroom 3 and hopefully help you decide whether or not it's worthwhile upgrading. Um, now, uh, I thought we'd start off just with the um, lens correction. So here in the develop module, we've got a lens correction section, which has got two modes, profile and manual. Now, if we start with the profile module, this is where you can correct the uh, lens correction um, for the way your particular lens distorts the image. All lenses will distort the image they see to some degree. I mean, you'll all be familiar with a fisheye lens and the way that makes everything look really sort of round and wide-angled and, and, and strange. Um, now, uh, all lenses do that to some degree, some more than others. Um, this particular photograph was taken with a Canon 40D with the uh, kit lens, the EFS 1755 with uh, um, uh, image stabilization on it. Um, now, if we click the Enable Profile Corrections here, um, we can say Set Up Auto, and it will actually examine the information that's in the, um, the metadata for this image, figure out what lens it was, and use the built-in image correction information for that lens. And uh, Adobe have included uh, a great many profiles for um, all of the common lenses that you'll find on Canons and Nikons and Sonys and all sorts of things. And in actual fact, you can see here we've got uh, a variety of different lens makes, so Canon, Nikon, Samsung, Schneider, uh, Sigma, Sony and Tamron, all the major brands. And uh, so, if there's a particular lens that you'd like to um, to correct for, uh, then uh, it's probably in here. As you can see, that's uh, all of the Canon EF and EFS lenses. Um, if there isn't uh, your lens in this system, there is a separately downloadable Adobe app for profiling your particular lens so that you can set it up just for uh, uh, just for you. Um, I'm not going to bother covering that because for 99.9% .9 of people, the lens you want is already in here, and uh, that that's uh, and also the the auto um, for any kind of modern camera that puts metadata in is just going to find it. So really, this is a very very simple feature. You turn on profile correction. You click the enable button and you choose auto and it's usually going to get it right. Um, now there's a couple of other sliders at the bottom here um, that, that allow us to do a couple of manual corrections and you can see what that's doing to the image. It's making it sort of more fisheye or less fisheye and what that's doing is it's sort of pulling in the edges um, and that fisheye effect quite often makes things uh, straight lines near the edges go curvy and that's how you would correct this. Um, there's also options here for correcting chromatic aberration, um, which is where um, the lens will tend to uh, uh, separate the light out into uh, a rainbow of colours nearer the edge of the lens, and that's uh, simply because glass will tend to act a bit like a prism um, and separate the lights out. Now that that's can be uh, the effect of that can be diminished with all sorts of coatings and clever uh, optical effects with uh, different lenses and very high quality lenses show very little chromatic aberration, but they all do to some degree, uh, particularly in cheaper lenses, and this slider here will take that uh, um, and realign those those different colours of light back together and just remove that. Um, it's usually quite effective and I don't really propose to cover it uh, in this particular video. Um, we also have a vignetting slider here. Um, quite a lot of lenses, particularly at the wider end, will have a sort of darkening around the edges and you can use a vignette slider here to remove that. But um, uh, the reason I'm not really covering those in detail is that the lens profile really should take care of all of that stuff. Um, and if, you, if you're just interested in correctly uh, correcting the the uh, distortion of your image based on the lens you were using, um, this is a, an extremely effective way of doing it. Um, as long as your lens is in there, of course, and if it's not, you can profile it yourself. So. Um, if that's something you're interested in, um, particularly if you're using some lenses that do provide a lot of distortion, um, so some specialist lenses that, that I mean, like the fish eyes, um, or some very wide lenses, um, then uh, then this might be 
uh, very useful to you to get your images looking a bit more natural again. Um, for most cases, for the standard zooms, um, you're probably not going to notice much difference. So if I just turn this on and off, um, you can see what it's doing to the image here. I've, I've got a little bit of, of uh, distortion in the on that slider there, but um, so here's what what that. Uh, setting for that particular lens is doing. You can see it is just sort of um, it's it's shrinking the middle down and expanding the edge out a little bit, correcting a little bit of distortion, a little bit of barrel distortion there. Um, it's not huge and you probably wouldn't ever notice it in your own images unless you sort of played with this and saw that that it was doing something. Um, but a lot more interesting to me than the uh, profile correction here uh, is the manual mode because this lets us do something that I've thought was missing from Lightroom for a long time and it's the ability to correct um, perspective um, uh, and uh, uh, and sort of horizontally and vertically line things so that they're straight again. Now the reason I picked this image um, is because we've got these vertical pillars here that uh, I mean uh, you can see it's been taken slightly off, off skew we'll correct that in a moment but um, quite often if you've got verticals like this in an image and you're sort of shooting up a bit um, then you end up with converging verticals because of their perspective they sort of they sort of angle in which can look uh, 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 in bad cases it, it looks quite bad sometimes you want that um, as a creative effect but this tool now with the manual mode allows us to manually correct those features so if I go to the vertical slider here you can see what it's doing it's like it's tilting the whole image, but what that in effect does is it allows us to straighten up those uh, vertical lines. Now, in this case, uh, what I thought I'd try and do is just crop in so that we've got um, those pillars actually at the sides of the image. So we've got sort of a bit of pillar on each one, um, and because we're doing that, those vertical lines right near the edge of the frame, so if I just accept that crop, you know, over here it's fairly straight, but over here it looks it looks very slopey, and it really draws your eye because that vertical is not in line with the edge of the frame. So this is a great example of where you might want to to play with that perspective correction. And in this case, we need to just rotate it uh, a little bit as well. So I'm thinking sort of around about there, uh, and we'll just tweak that perspective correction until those edges of those pillars is approximately level with the uh, the edge of the frame. So if I hover over there you can see we've got some nice guidelines that show us verticals um, and we can sort of hold the uh, hold, hold our cursor over one of the sliders so it shows us the guidelines and we can see whether or not our image is square and uh, I think in this case we're not far off um, but I am seeing another problem. I could spend a bit longer on that um, but uh, uh, you get the idea. Um, uh, but the other problem here is these horizontals are now not square either. So I've got another slider, the horizontal slider, that lets me correct in the other direction. And there we go, that's looking a little better now. So um, I think our verticals are pretty close, our horizontals are pretty close, and the whole image now feels a lot more square, and uh, a lot more the way you see it in our mind's eye when we look at it in the real world. So let me just turn that on and off and you can see the difference it's made. Look at how it sort of unskews it. So it, now, now when you look at that, it, it feels like it's sort of, uh, it's sort of off skew a little bit. It's been um, bent to the right. Um, so you, you straighten it all up and it just takes those distracting elements out, makes the image feel a lot more square, which of course, you know, that's if you look at it in the real world, you would see it as square because your brain would perceive these, these nice rectangles. So um, that's extremely useful for correcting perspective distortions, particularly with converging verticals or horizontals. And um, I'm very, very pleased to see that as a new feature in Lightroom 3. That, that to me, is huge. That's something that I've been particularly looking forward to having. This video is an extract from Photo Walkthrough, an online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you'd like to see more, you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.